Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. My name is Jason, thanks for watching. Today we're checking out this brand new power station. This is the GoLabs R500. Now this packs 518 watt hours of capacity and is a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And with features like pass through charging and a regulated DC output, this thing looks really good on paper. Now the whole purpose of this video is to take this power station, do extensive testing, to verify if it stands up to the advertising claims, and to see if it's something that my viewers will actually want. Now with lithium iron phosphate chemistry inside and a designed 3500 life cycles, this thing looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and jump into the review. We're gonna be looking at the front of the power station first, and then we'll be doing some extensive testing to verify everything works properly. Now I really like the design of this power station. It has a large bright screen and four different power buttons. This one turns on and off the power station. This one's for the DC output. This one's for the AC inverter. And this one is dedicated for the display. So you can actually turn on and off the display to save power. And each of these buttons have a blue light that's pretty bright so you can see if they're turned on or off. Now talking about the actual outputs, we'll start with the 12 volt output first. So we have a cigarette plug with a dust cover, which is really nice, and two 5521 barrel connectors. Now these are all regulated at 12.1 volts. Now during my testing, I was able to pull a total of 145 watts out of these connections before the battery shut off from pulling too much power. So it's actually really good. Most are limited around 120 watts, so 145 watts is really good. Talking about the USB ports here, we have two USB-A ports that are quick charge 3.0. Then we have two USB type C. Now they're power delivery 60 watt on the top and a power delivery 100 watt on the bottom. What's really cool about that bottom port is it accepts input and output. So you can charge this power station up at 100 watts or you can charge up another power station or a laptop. Now I did test all these at the same time and I was able to charge up my Energizer 320 at 100 watts using that type C cable. Now talking about the AC inverter, you have two outlets here on the side. Now I did test the sine wave on this and it is a pure sine wave inverter. And I tested the inverter at over 10 minutes. I ran it at max power and I didn't have any issues the fans did turn on, but these fans are not loud at all. So I was very happy with the results on that AC inverter. Now looking at the display, it's really easy to use. It shows you input wattage, output wattage, and it gives you an estimated runtime on the current load. So with the AC inverter enabled, we're using a little bit of background power and it's estimating around 30 hours of capacity remaining at this load. Now I love that it has an actual percentage for the battery capacity. It also gives you a battery icon so you can see it at a quick glance. Now on the side of the power station, there is a diffused LED light with multiple modes. This is really good to use for emergencies or camping. It has a high mode, a low mode, an SOS mode, and a strobe light mode. Now, speaking of the build construction and quality of this battery, the entire battery is built of this ABS plastic. The corners are rounded and uh, it's really lightweight. It only weighs about 14.1 pounds, so it's really easy to carry around, especially with this ergonomic handle on top. Now, there is an air vent on each side for airflow and the fans are not loud on this unit. Now, looking at the bottom of the power station, it has these rubber feet keep it from scratching the surface that it's sitting on and also keeps it from sliding around, especially if it's sitting in the back of a car, those rubber feet hold it in place. Now the next thing I want to talk about with this power station is how to charge it up. Now there are four different ways to charge up this power station. Let's go ahead and dive into each one of those ways really briefly. Now the first way to charge up this power station would be using the 12 volt cigarette cable that's included. You plug that into a 12 volt cigarette plug and the other end into the R500 input jack you'll see around 61 to 60 watts input charging. Now the second way to charge up this power station would be using a solar panel. Right after we talk about all the charging methods, we'll go ahead and take this out to do some solar testing. Now the third way to charge up this power station is by using the included wall charger. You just plug it into the input barrel plug and you can get around 86 to 87 watts charging input. Now the fourth way to charge up this power station is by using the included 100 watt power delivery cable. If you have a 100 watt power source like the EB55, you plug it in there and you plug the other side into the input port and you can get 104 watts charging on the R500. Now I wanted to test if it does dual charging, so I plugged in both the AC adapter and the USB-C 100 watt power delivery cable and I still got 104 watts from the USB-C. So it looks like you can choose one or the other and it does not support dual charging inputs. Now this power station does indeed support pass-through charging. I have a DC load and an AC load and it's still taking a charging input of 86 watts. So really good signs. You should be able to use this power station and charge it at the same time. Now it also tested pass-through charging while having a 100 watt USB-C power delivery input. 
So you can see we're getting 104 watts input and still putting out 245 watts through the DC and AC outputs. Okay guys, let's go ahead and do some solar testing on the GoLabs R500. Let's go ahead and show you what the conditions look like today. Okay, so we got pretty clear conditions, a little bit of haze. It's around uh, 55 degrees, late fall day. So I have both of my Elikanta 120s connected in parallel. Now this test is not to see which panel works best with this. I just want to see the max output. So we're going to be putting both these in parallel and plugging them directly into the GoLabs R500. Let's see what we're getting. Okay, so I'm using the default uh, MC4 cables. Polarity looks good. We're getting 101 to 103 watts input. Now this does have a five amp limit. So depending on the voltage of your solar panels, if you have a higher voltage on your solar panels, you're gonna be getting more power into it. So let's go ahead and test another solar panel. Okay, next solar panel I'm gonna test with the GoLabs power station is this Bouge RV 180 watt solar panel. Now I have it propped up at such a steep angle because uh, it's really late in the year and the sun's like really low in the sky. So let's go ahead and see what we're getting on this power station. Okay, so I'm using the stock cables from the Bouge RV solar panel right into the MC4 adapters. Getting 97, 98 watts input right now. So this does appear to have a slightly less voltage than the Elikantas. That's why we're not seeing over 100 watts like we were on the other one. Remember a 5 amp limit, so the higher the voltage, the more power you're going to get in the power station. Okay, so there you have it. There are the solar testing results. You can use folding panels or rigid panels. Didn't see any issues. Uh, solar charge controller seems to be pretty efficient. And uh, we definitely saw the max five amp limit. If you're gonna be picking out a solar panel, you might wanna find a solar panel that has a higher voltage to get the max amount of solar charging input. Now, I briefly wanna talk about polarity for these MC4 connections because it can be a little confusing. So I have here a solar panel uh, output. So this is what I have on the solar panel side, and this is what I have on the input for the power station. Now, if you look at the polarity here, you have two positive connections. Now this says positive and this says positive, but they both won't go together. And it's the same way with the negative side. So you always wanna follow the power from the solar panel into the power station. So one of these sides have to be reversed to connect together. So if we know this is positive and this is negative, GoLabs was gonna go ahead and plan ahead. And so that's how we know the polarity on this input side. So you have the positive and it has to connect to this and you have the negative and it has to connect to this. Now I did verify and this is the proper polarity and it worked just fine. So then what I did is I took these connections and I labeled them properly. So I know this is the positive and I know that this is the negative. So now there shouldn't be any confusion on which side is positive and negative. Now it would have been nice if they labeled these wires over here, like if this was a red wire, but they did not do that. For example, I have another power station connection cable here, and you can see that red goes to red and black goes to black. So it would have been nice if GoLabs had it actually, you know, labeled with the proper colors, but this is the same setup. So all you have to do is make sure you follow power from the solar panel and the receiving side is going to have a reverse polarity. You do not follow the polarity on the actual connector because it's the receiving side. And that should be the case for most of these power stations. Now this GoLabs R500 comes with 518 watt hours of advertised capacity. I always like to test the actual capacity. So I plugged in my battery load tester to the 12 volt output and I ran it all the way from 100% down to 10% because that's when the DC output shut off. Let's go ahead and see what the results were. Now the test ran for three hours and 56 minutes and we got about 410 watt hours or 34.82 amp hours. Now this 410 is about 79% of the rated capacity of this battery. Now we would see more capacity out of this battery if it didn't shut off at 10%. Now I did the math, that's about 50 watt hours or so if we took it all the way down to zero. So if it went all the way down to zero, we get close to 89% of the rated capacity. Now it's a good thing that this does shut off a little early. This is gonna give you a lot more charge and discharge cycles over the life of the battery versus just getting a little bit more extra capacity each time you use it. So now what I wanna do with this R500 is take the AC inverter and do a discharge test to see how efficient the AC inverter is. So I have my watt meter plugged in here, pulling around 97 watts through this meter. The screen shows 92, there's always gonna be a slight difference there. Now this has been running for a couple minutes now. You see the battery's at 97%. 
We're gonna go ahead and take this all the way down to 0% and track the watt hours that are pulled, and that'll give us the efficiency of the AC inverter. Let's go ahead and let this test run. I will track this with a time lapse to see what we get. Okay guys, the AC inverter just shut off. This is the end of the test. Now it originally shut off at 8% and uh, we pulled about 370 watt hours from the battery. I wanted to see if we could pull more so I turned the AC inverter back on and it shut off at 7%. So there's no way it's gonna turn back on. I tried turning it on and it doesn't turn on. Let's go ahead and charge this up and then we can turn this on to see how much power we pulled from the battery. Okay, so I charged it up to 17%. Now the AC inverter will turn on. You see we pulled 370 watt hours. So if we take the actual DC capacity versus the AC output, we can get an efficiency rating. So let's take this 370 divided by the 410 that we got through the DC discharge test. That gives us around 90% efficiency on the AC inverter. Now, whenever I test one of these power stations, I like to do a long duration DC output test just to make sure that the battery stays powered and it doesn't have any eco mode settings that shut it off. So I have my ice code go 20 12 volt fridge plugged into this. We're going to let this run for 12 to 24 hours, come back and check to make sure the fridge is still cold and the battery is still powered on. Let's go ahead and let this test run and I'll come back and check in. Okay guys, it's the next morning. It's been about 24 hours and uh, everything's still running. So this battery doesn't have any weird settings that shut it off. If you have the DC output on, it will run your appliance until you shut it off or the battery runs out of power. Okay guys, we're coming to the end of the video. Now there's just three more things I wanna talk about. We wanna talk about price. I wanna talk about pros and cons and I wanna talk about everything that comes with this battery. Now I know there's been a ton of information and all this testing and information is just to help you make a better decision if this battery or power station is right for you. So hopefully you'll feel confident to make a decision after this video is finished. Now this comes in an MSRP of $499. Now that's a bit expensive, but there is a $100 coupon off right now to bring the price down to $399. Now I'm not sure how long that coupon's valid, you know, I just noticed on Amazon that they have that coupon available. So definitely if you're interested in picking this up, you might wanna pick it up at that current price because I don't know how long that coupon's gonna be valid. Now let's go ahead and talk about some pros and cons. Now we'll start with the pros for this power station. Now it comes in with a lot of good things going for it. It has the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. It has the regulated output, pass through charging, has the 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And it has most importantly, an amazing display that shows you everything you know and it has the 100 watt power delivery USB-C that supports input and output. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about some cons. So cons would be the stock price. $499 for this power station is a bit expensive because there's some competition that comes in uh, with more features for a lesser price. Also, another con would be the limited capacity that we saw. We saw 410 watt hours out of the DC output. Now remember, it did stop that capacity at 10%, so it didn't bring the battery all the way down to zero. And if you think about it, that's kind of a feature that helps you get more life cycles over the battery because it doesn't take it all the way down to 0%. They've opted to go for more life cycles or more uses over its life versus just a little bit more capacity per discharge. So. You know, it could be a con, it could be a pro, but in my eyes, I just think that you could get a little bit more capacity than 410 watt hours. Now let's go ahead and talk briefly about what comes with the power station. There's a lot of stuff that comes with the power station that adds value to this unit because some power stations don't come with this stuff. So you get the AC wall adapter, you get the uh, USB-C charging cable, you get the solar adapters that I already talked about, and you get the car adapter. So many different ways to charge this up and you also have the owner's manual and a warranty card. So I definitely invite everyone to always read the owner's manual before uh, using the power station and definitely uh, discharge it and charge it up right when you get it and make sure everything works. Now, if you have any issues, um, with the battery, go ahead and reach out to this email. This is support at golabs.com. If you have any issues, you should be able to reach them 24 seven as this card suggests. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments about the power station, do you guys have one of these already? How has it worked for you? Go ahead and throw a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on the Golabs R500. Now, does this have everything you want? What else do you suggest that they add to this battery? Now, one thing that I would love to see on this would be dual charging input with the 100 watt USB-C and the solar input. I would love to see that to charge at 200 watts, but we didn't quite get that with this power station. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll go ahead and end the video here. We'll see you guys in the next video.